Hi, if you're in the market for a new TV and you're not really sure what to go for because there's so much choice, then you're not on your own. So what I've done is I've come up with 10 things to consider before you buy a TV. So although this is in no particular order, uh, the first one I'd have to say is the most important and that's the size of the TV. Uh, so you could start off with a small TV like this one, which is a 24 inch. Uh, all of the screen sizes are measured diagonally and we're still in inches so we're within the UK. Uh, surprisingly, because a lot of things have gone metric, but for the TV industry, we've really stuck with, with inches. So, as I say, they're measured diagonally. Uh, it doesn't normally take into account the frame as well, but the frame on the TVs are normally pretty thin now. Uh, that's something else to mention, that a lot of people, if you've had a TV, say, 10 years ago, uh, say if you had a 37 inch LCD TV, they were quite popular sizes back then. Uh, so a 37 inch, if you're replacing it now, just take into account that the frame on the old TV, they were probably pretty thick. And compared to newer TVs where the frame or the bezel around the outside is really thin, then a th an old 37 inch LCD TV, you'd easily be able to get a 40 inch TV and the external size won't really be any different. So they start off around this size. You can get smaller than that, but if you're in a kitchen or bedroom, then the 24 inch is a popular size. And then to go from the 24, the most popular next size tends to be a 32 inch, which is that size. Uh, you will find that some manufacturers have slightly odd sizes. Some of them have a 28 or even 30 inch. But for the mainstream, for the main manufacturers, then they, they tend to go up to a 32 inch. Uh, again, that tends to be popular in a, a bedroom. Uh, but we don't tend to find many people are buying that kind of size for the main viewing TV. Uh, that really starts off around the 40 or 43 inch, which is this size. Uh, now this size has become very popular over the years, the 43 inch. Uh, and then as you go from here, then you go into the realms of 48 and 50 inch. Um, and then the next size that we do really well with is 55 inch. And then from the 55 inch, you just go up and up. So you've got 65, 75, 85 inch. Uh, you can find that there are sizes in between those. So if you have got a really big room and you really enjoy watching your TV, then you can go for something really impressive. Now quite a few people ask us if there's a recommended size depending on either the size of the room or how far away you're sitting from it. And to an extent there, there are. Um, and what we normally recommend is up to one and a half meters, then around a 32 inch. So that means you, you're pretty close to it. Um, up to two meters, around a 40 inch. Up to two and a half meters, around a 45, 48 inch TV. Up to three meters, around a 50 to 55 inch TV and anything over three meters, then it's normally recommended either a 55 or 60 or something a bit above that. Now, that's normally a good compromise as to uh, not having to strain your eyes when you're looking at it. Uh, there's nothing worse than having a, a huge room, uh, a really nice impressive room with just a, a little piddly 32 inch sitting in the corner, which some people do, that's, that's all they want. Uh, on the other way around, you can find that you've got some people that are more than happy to sit one and a half meters away and have a 55 inch TV sit, sat there. Now, it's always personal opinion. So that was number one on the list, the size of the TV. Now, if you decided that the size of the TV you want to go for is say a 48 or 50 inch or above, anything above that, then you've got a choice of what type of TV to go for. Now you've got LED, so this is an example, it's just the, the Sony 32 inch. That's one that we do really well with. Um, so you've either got LED or OLED. Now there are other technologies available, you've got things like QLED as well, uh, but the two main ones tend to be LED or OLED. And the main advantage of an OLED TV compared to a normal LED TV uh, are that the things like the colours are a lot more vibrant than an LED TV. Also, if you, if you go back several years, if you remember the old plasma TVs, one advantage of the plasma were that the black was really black, it was a proper black, compared to an LED TV that really struggles to do that. It struggles to produce a, a really dark black. You will find that it's sometimes it's a bit wishy-washy grey. Uh, that's something that an OLED TV is really good at. Um, what I'd always recommend, and you'll probably hear me several times in this video, recommending to go and see the TV. Uh, don't necessarily just look online and look at reviews and things like that. Go into a shop and actually go and see them and see it on a normal free view broadcast. 
So another advantage of an OLED TV compared to the LED TV is that the viewing angle of it is a lot better on the OLED. So number three in the list, and this is something that we are talking about all the time with TVs, and basically is the TV a smart TV? And what kind of apps does it come with? You will find that there are a lot of smart TVs on the, on the market now, um, but the main thing to consider is what apps come with the TV. Because just because it's a smart TV doesn't mean it has all the apps downloaded. And also, don't assume that you can just go and download other apps onto the TV as well. This is something a lot of people think, that if you've got a smart TV, you can just go and download other apps onto it. Now, there are other devices that you can plug into the TV. Uh, you've got things like Chromecast or a Fire Stick that you can just plug in, and you can get other apps on it. Uh, that's sort of cheating because what, what I'm trying to do is to show you what apps come built into the TV. So just to show you this, so this is a Panasonic OLED TV and as you can see the range of apps on here is really impressive. Uh, you've got things like the iPlayer, ITV Hub Channel 4 and My5. So these are mainstream TV catch-up services and the advantage of these is that it enables you to go back so if you have missed something on TV then a lot of the programs do go onto these almost straight away. Uh, so you've got the advantage that you can, um, if you've missed something, then you can just go back and watch it. So as well as having the main catch-up services, uh, you've got all the other popular ones as well. Netflix and Prime Video, these two go down really well now. Uh, some manufacturers even put a dedicated button on here. So on the Panasonic remote, you've got the Netflix button. Uh, on the left-hand side here, you have got the apps market. Um, what this enables you to do, uh, manufacturers on the odd occasion will download other apps. Uh, within the apps market and it gives you the option if you want to go and download them onto the TV. The main reason they do that is you don't necessarily want to have this section all cluttered up. So it's a system that does work really well. Now although you've got the catch-up services here that you can go in, you can search for the program that you want, there is actually an easier way and that's something called Freeview Play. So you'll see at the top left here you've got something called Freeview Play. So when you press the guide button uh, this is just the normal guide that's on. So although it's giving the inf information here as to what's on at the moment, if you press the left button on the remote control, then what it will do is it will actually scroll to the left and it will actually search for different programs. So it will show you what was on previously and then just press OK and then you can watch that. So it's, it's just another way of operating the catch-up services. So number four on the list and something else we talk about quite a bit is Full HD or 4K or 8K, which one to go for, which one's the best. Now clearly the bigger the number, then in theory it should be better. So an 8K TV should be better than a 4K. Uh, basically a Full HD TV, which are pretty much all TVs now, so you will find some of the TVs, some of the portable ones are not Full HD. So a Full HD TV will have 1920 by 1080 pixels. And you should find that even the picture on those will be very good. Now if you want something that's a bit better, then start to look into the realms of a 4K TV and basically what that means, that's four times the resolution, so it's got four times the number of pixels on the TV compared to a Full HD TV. And then as you go to an 8K TV, that's eight times the resolution of a Full HD TV. Now there's a, a huge amount of technology that goes behind this. Uh, the only thing I will say is don't assume that just because it's a 4K TV, that the picture will be better than a full HD TV. In theory it should be, but a lot of it goes into the processor that they use. Uh, a lot of manufacturers are really proud of some of the, the processors that they use and the systems actually working the TV. Uh, I have seen some 4K TVs and the pictures are not as good as some of the full HD TVs. And this is again why I recommend to actually go into a showroom and look at the picture before you buy one. Just consider what you're watching through the TV. Uh, you will find if you're just watching Freeview broadcasts all the time and you've not got any other equipment connected to it, then you're not really gonna get the full benefit of a, especially an 8K TV, because the, the broadcasts that are coming through at the moment are not even in 4K or 8K. If you have got something like Sky or Virgin uh, or other services, uh, say subscription services, then you can find that uh, some broadcasters are showing content in, say, 4K. Uh, especially as you go on to YouTube, there's quite a lot of 4K content. 
Uh, a lot of this can come down to the broadband that you've got, so you'd need to make sure that you've got fibre to, to really get the benefits of these. But quite a few of the 4K and 8K TVs do have the upscaling option. So if, you know, if you're watching, uh, say, high definition broadcast, just on a normal Freeview service, then the picture is upscaled. So it's, it is a, an impressive picture, uh, but it's not quite the 4K or the 8K that it can be. Uh, what you can find is really to get the benefit, uh, you do need a, a 4K or an 8K player. So these are normally Blu-ray players. Uh, but have a look for a proper 4K player uh, and also when you're buying the disc make sure it is a, a native 4K or 8K um, because you can find some of them are not the, the proper 4K content. And that tends to lead into number five which is other screen technologies. Uh, there are, there's a huge amount to talk about when it comes to screen technology. I'm not going to go into it all in detail. Uh, you will find there's a lot of information about TV screen technologies, uh, but some of the basics are things like HDR, which is high dynamic range. Uh, that's something which a lot of manufacturers are putting on some of their even medium to high end TVs. So you will find that when you have got the HDR switched on on the TV, that the white in the picture is very bright and the black is very dark. Uh, what it does is quite difficult to explain, but it will actually really, really enhance both of those. So especially as you go to the OLED technology, then the HDR combined with that is really, really impressive. Other things like frame rate, uh, so this is the like, Hertz rating. It's not something we talk about too much now, uh, but have a look at the frame rate of the TV and consider what you're going to be watching. Uh, if you're just going to be watching, uh, say, the soaps, then it's not quite as relevant. But if you're watching things like movies or if you're watching things like sports, then there are certain TVs that have certain uh, like screen technology specially designed for those and some of them have uh, buttons on the remote where you can change it so have a look for other screen technologies because uh, it really depends on what you watch you know if you're very much into your uh, say sports like uh, motor racing or football then you can find that when you've got fast camera action that can be very different to if you're watching a movie where it could be quite a dark setting and the cameras are not moving around a lot. Now number six on my list would be what kind of tuners built into the TV. Now for a lot of people, a lot of TVs have Freeview built in and that's pretty standard. Uh, you will find that there's a lot of people and we're talking to customers almost every day about this. There's a lot of customers who uh, have had over the years a satellite subscription service and the payments keep going up and up and they don't want to pay anymore. They're not taking full advantage of the service. So what they want to do is they still want to use the dish uh, because they've already got that on the side of the house. Uh, and that's really where FreeSat comes in. This is a, a subscription free service and some TVs have FreeSat built in. It did go through, it was very, very popular years ago. Uh, it did go through a bit of a lull we found when Freeview HD came to the market because FreeSat was really good because that had the high definition service. Uh, so FreeSat had the high definition before Freeview, uh, but the main advantage now is because both services have HD, then FreeSat is seeing quite a resurgence now, and we are finding that more TVs are going back to having FreeSat built in. So just have a look, because sometimes if you have had the satellite subscription service, then you might just be able to plug it into the back of the TV using the satellite cable and get extra channels compared to what you get on Freeview. And that tends to lead quite nicely into number seven, and that's what are you going to connect to the TV? Uh, if you have got several boxes that you were connecting, uh, say a Skybox or BT or Virgin, um, and also you've got other things like a Blu-ray player or DVD, uh, there's, there's a huge amount of equipment that you can connect to the TV nowadays um, and we are finding that people are running out of sockets so just have a look at what connections you've got. Uh, some customers, I suppose mainly the older generations, want to connect uh, things like an old video recorder or a, a video and a DVD combo. Um, most of those were connected with a SCART connection but the SCART has pretty much gone now uh, you will find that they have been replaced by HDMI connections. Uh, look out for a TV that's got at least three. 
Uh, majority of the better TVs have either three or four or even more than that. Um, also have a look to make sure it's got USB connections. Uh, you will find majority of them are on the side of the TV. Uh, that does have a huge advantage rather than just plugging into the back and I'll go through that in a moment. Uh, but a lot of these, so I mean on this TV, on this Sony TV, you've got a really good selection. So you have got one HDMI here and the other HDMI's are just round, round the side here. Uh, you have also got USB connection at the top. You've got the aerial just down the side here and also you've got have got a satellite connection like I was just talking about a moment ago. Um, have a look for things like headphones. So if you do use headphones, then that could be another connection and also you've got the optical connection as well. Um, this can be very useful if you're gonna connect a soundbar. Uh, if you do run out of HDMI connections, then a lot of soundbars still use optical. Uh, also, you have got the LAN connection. So you will find that uh, if the, because a lot of TVs have got wireless built in, so connecting it to the internet is quite easy now. It just uses a wireless system. If the wireless, that, if the, the wireless you're using in your house isn't that great, uh, if you're in quite an old property, and if you've got very thick walls or where the router is, it's located a long way from your TV, then you could find hardware in it could be the better option. So just make sure that it's got the, the LAN connection on the back as well. So that was just really to cover all the connections on the TV. Uh, before you buy your new TV, have a look to see what equipment you've got that you're going to connect to it before you buy it and make sure you've got enough connections to cover it. So number eight on the list is to consider whether it's wall mountable. Uh, this is something that a lot of people are doing now to put them on the walls. Uh, the main advantage are a lot of TVs are a lot thinner than they used to be. So the idea of putting them onto the wall is a lot easier. They're a lot lighter as well. Uh, so even if you have got, say, just a stud wall, then they're nice and easy to put onto a wall. But the main thing to look at are the holes in which you mount the wall bracket. So as I say, this is a Sony 43 inch TV and the mounting holes on the back here uh, they're normally measured in millimetres, so this is 100 mil by 200 going down. Uh, so you will find that there are thousands and thousands of brackets available. There's no end to choose from. Uh, again, just choose something that is going to suit your needs. When it comes to wall brackets, if you are just going to keep it in a certain position, then try and go for a fairly slim one. Go for a fairly slim wall bracket. Um, don't be tempted by the very, very slim ones. Uh, because you can find sometimes the connections, getting the connections on the back can be quite difficult. Um, and that's the advantage. Uh, I did mention earlier about having the connections on the side. That's one advantage of having them on the side as opposed to just on the back. That if you do wall mount the TV, then you're not troubled uh, by having the connections just coming out the back and interfering with the wall when you've got it mounted. So on this TV, as I said, this is 100 by 200 and you will find that that's quite a standard bracket. Uh, most brackets go to say a two by 200. Uh, but don't assume that just because they are a smaller TV that they're going to use a smaller mounting system. This is a Sony 32 inch. So th again, this is one we do really well with, uh, but the bracket that you need for this is quite a, an awkward size. Uh, this actually measures 300 by 200. Uh, so if you have got the standard wall bracket, which um, for a smaller TV is probably a, a 100 by 100 or 2 by 200, then on this particular TV it wouldn't fit. So number nine on my list is going to be the warranty on the TV. Just have a look to see what warranty comes with the TV. Uh, you will find a standard, the most manufacturers will offer a one year guarantee. Uh, but as you go higher up in the range, uh, some of the better models will offer a five year guarantee. Uh, so just have a look to see what warranty it covers. Uh, the main reason I mention this is because servicing isn't done as much now. You will find if you go back 10, 15, 20 years there are a lot of uh, service engineers around that would repair TVs. Uh, it is still something we do, uh, but we do very little of it now. Uh, the main thing is that the, the cost of repairing a TV can be quite expensive. Uh, so just have a look to see what warranty comes with it because that can save you a lot of money in the future. So number 10 and the final thing to consider is the cost of the TV. Uh, you will find for a lot of people it could be really high up in the list. Uh, for other people it's quite a way down in the list. Um, the cost is always important. 
uh, clearly the, the amount you pay for a TV is going to make a huge difference. If you're at this end of the market spending £100-£150 compared to this end of the market where you're spending in the realms of £1,500-£2,000 and above, then clearly you're going to notice a, quite a difference in the picture quality. Uh, the main thing I would say, and I, I have said it once or twice before, uh, try and have a look at the TV physically. Go into a showroom, have a look at it before you buy it. Some things are fine when you buy them online, uh, but with a TV, I always recommend people to go into a showroom and have a look. The main advantage is that you get the ability to use the TV, have a look at it on a free view broadcast, or at least on a live broadcast. Don't always go into a showroom. Uh, I know some of the big stores will offer um, where you've got a whole bank of them and they're showing a really impressive 4K display. And that's okay to see them like that, uh, but it doesn't give you a true reflection of what the TV is going to show. Because that's not necessarily how you're going to be watching the TV all the time. So when you go into a showroom, have a look at it on a normal Freeview broadcast. So cost, of course, is important, uh, but what I always recommend is have a look at something that fits your needs. So I suppose just to recap as to some of the things I've covered, uh, things like have a look at the apps that are on the TV, have a look to make sure it has got all the apps that you need, uh, because some of the TV don't have all the catch-up apps. That little Sony TV there, for the number that we do, uh, because we do loads of those, it doesn't have all the catch-up services, uh, and that could be an issue for some people. Um, also have a look at to make sure that it's wall mountable, uh, just check that the bracket that you've got on your wall will fit the new TV. So just check the, the fittings on the back. So just have a look at the specification of the TV because you can find by paying a little bit more there might be some features on that TV that really get give you a better viewing experience. And also check what you're going to connect to it. If you're going to be connecting things like a, a Blu-ray player, if you've got your Skybox or Virgin Box or BT Box, um, if you've got an old video player to connect to it, which some people want to do, then just check to make sure you've got all the connections that are required. Uh, also, the kind of free view or free sat service. Uh, if you want to use both of those, then some TVs have the facility too, but not all of them. So just check to make sure it's got all the relevant connections on there before you buy the TV. I hope you enjoyed that quick video on the 10 things to consider before buying a TV. All I'd normally ask is please subscribe to our channel, click the thumbs up on YouTube, and leave any comments below. Now I know that there are lots of things that I've probably missed uh, but I've, I did to be fair really struggle to condense it down to 10 because there are lots and lots of things to consider. Also if there's something that you think should have gone into the top 10 then leave that in the comments or if you have got any questions on TVs then just leave it in the comments and I should get back to you. Thanks for watching.